Hello, everyone. Welcome to Force to Pod, a Force to White production. Uh, my name is Saxon, but you can call me Sax. Uh, with me tonight, I have a work friend stuck with me for life due to our sure love of Mexican food, video games, and general Midwest dad vibes. The newlywed, Nick. How's it going, man? Uh, not too bad. Thank Good. you. How are Good. you? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. Got a got a new light. It was two dungeony vibes in here, so hopefully you guys see that. A little <laughs> little investment in uh, uh, radiating, so so it would be, but artificially uh, at that. And last but not least, I have a man who would always rather be outside. However, is coming live from his fiance's childhood bedroom. The man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> the one only. I am the mountain man, Walker. How, how's it going, brother? There's not enough trees in here, Sax. There's not enough trees. Uh, there is a lot of natural looking wood above you, though, which There's, is, you know, dead trees close enough. A lot of pictures of my fiance and kids books. <laughs> I love the fact um, I, my parents moved to all over the place, so I don't have like a stationary like childhood Ooh. home like or, <laughs> yeah, childhood home or childhood bedroom. Uh, set up anywhere. I got all kinds of stuff that's just lost to time. All sorts of Pokemon cards and things like that. Mm-hmm. I just will never see again. No idea. Just moving. Probably just got thrown out. So, um, but yeah. So it's kind of nice having that. Heather's parents. They ended up moving, but she had for a long time once she was out of the house too. <laughs> just kind of like cemented. It was like we don't touch anything in there. So, um, yeah. so anyways, this is our third episode of the podcast, and boys, I gotta tell you. Uh, we're making moves out there. So we have our first sponsor of the podcast. No and you way, may ask, dude. Sax, who is this sponsor? And I would say that is a damn good question. Tonight's episode is sponsored by the Forced White Merch Shop, where you, for a short time, can pick up the Forced White 30th anniversary shirt in either Pebble or Heather Dust, which obviously has a nice spot in my heart. Um, as you boys may know, the reviews for all of our products so far have been glowing. However, I am a bit biased in the direction of these anniversary shirts because they were a bit of a passion project for me. Um, however, if that's not your thing, maybe check out our custom Force to Cook apron uh, sprinkled in there with some Destiny 2 Easter eggs. Just stop by the site and see if you can spot them all. Please visit bit.ly forward slash FTW merch. And also, a little pink birdie might have stopped by and suggested to me that we should cook up some merch for the spoopy season. So keep your eye out for some new hotness there. Once again, that is bit.ly forward slash FTW merch, bit.ly forward slash FTWMERCH. Now, boys, what do you think? First sponsor? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, that was something uh, cooked up there, but yeah, it feels good little passion project with the uh the merch shop there and so have you boys checked it out i mean i know nick has he's been repping that stuff but i want to see I'm what looking you guys at it right now actually it's yeah. i uh, i was i was percolating on how they got all these models to wear your clothing but i have to imagine that it's like computer generated or something but i think so it's I think so. darn impressive how much it mm-hmm. looks like we just have straight up real people repping our stuff yep and we do uh, now have a lot of pictures of people in the actual merch because they've been delivered and such. So, uh, but we're not going to swap them out because yeah, what they've generated is pretty good. So I'm assuming real people, just models doing whatever. So yeah, we're not going to swap them out because the people that they have on there are better looking than the people. Oh, absolutely. That the merch. Not that absolutely. we're not all models, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did we, wear uh, my nice shirt today. It was much cheaper to do it that way. So, um, So anyways, getting that out of the way, I want to hop in uh, to topic zero for the night, Uh, just our beginning topic, a few minutes discussing Nick's wedding. Uh, Nick did the damn thing this weekend. Um, I want to, obviously I have my, my point of view on it all, but Nick, I want to, I want to get your point of view. How are you feeling, man? Uh, Pretty good. It was good. Uh, All things considered, really our biggest issue was weather. Um, Mm we had the remnants of the hurricane had come through the South and into the Midwest. And, um, really actually we can kind of get in, into this with, with my topic as well. But, um, <laughs> the weather came into Bloomington did not really come into Plainfield. So, um, yeah, it was just gray and drizzly and windy all, all morning. We had to pivot kind of where the ceremony was going to be, but really, uh, things went pretty well. Um, 
ceremony was short and sweet, like we wanted it to be. All our friends and family were there. Uh, we didn't really have any major issues, save for um, the catering company who also was in charge of the alcohol services. I think what happened was they had a mix up in what we ordered. So we ordered two wines and three beers. The well, it was two beers and seltzers. The two beers showed up, no seltzers, and then the two wines that did show up were not the right ones. And so our thankfully we had a wedding a wedding coordinator who was very very good. Um she was like, "No worries, I'll call the company and a couple of minutes later, she's like, yeah, they're on the way to the store. They're going to get the right stuff. We'll have it here. I only found this out because about half an hour before the ceremony, Kristen's like, can you give me a glass of wine, please? I was like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we had everything was ready to go by the time we were at that point. However, the um, two bartenders that showed up were absolutely wasted. Like, oh, really? like when that, yes, when they arrived to the, to the venue. So I mentioned that as well. Um, our coordinator said she called their manager. They had somebody else on the way and, and those guys got a ride and they were not working that night. So, wow. yeah, that was, it, it was relatively painless. I just told her, Hey, this is the issue. And in half an hour it was fixed. So That's other sick. than that, yeah, everything was great. We had a good time. Yeah. Honestly, man. I mean, yeah, none of that was apparent to, I right. mean, obviously anyone you told, but like, I, I wouldn't have had any idea. Now I don't, I don't typically drink, so I wouldn't have had much of an idea of any of that anyways. But I, uh, obviously the rest of the drinks were right there by the bartenders and the ones that I saw mm-hmm. were, you know, they were perfectly fine uh, appearing, <laughs> you know, not nothing outward. Yeah. So I don't even know if I saw them. So, um, yeah, no, I mean like all that happened inside the venue. So you guys were set up kind of the, the guests arrived and were outside on, on the patio area and all that was taking place inside prior to us actually you. even starting the ceremony. So yeah, it was, it, for what those issues were, they were handled about as well as you could hope for. Um, and then really the only other problem I had was that, uh, the DJ was killing it and nobody was inside on the dance floor after a certain point. Cause it was just too hot. Everybody was hanging out outside. So I had to, you know, go up and talk to him and be like, Hey man, I just want to let you know, everybody thinks you're doing a great job. They're just not inside the venue. <laughs> Everybody's outside cause it's too hot in here. Yeah. I mean, I guess my question was, cause it was, it was getting a little hot. So for, for context, we, it was about a two hour drive, uh, for us coming in. So we, we got in there. Um, we actually left way early cause you know how I am. I, I just, <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to be late to something like that. So, uh, we, we actually left about three hours early and then we kind of hung out for a little bit, got out there. Like you said, the, you know, the adjustment on the ceremony, you had already told me what you're planning on doing, but the fact that we had just, you know, everything fit perfect on that little side porch there, perfectly mm. covered. Um, I, I didn't really see anything. I know there were a couple of people wiping, you know, the edge seats off just because right. it was misting, yeah. but it really wasn't raining that bad. Honestly, the, the aesthetic of it all was awesome. I can't wait to see some pictures from it. Cause I could see them coming out really, really nice with the overcast. So, yeah, I think that was kind of a blessing in disguise. Cause we did our run through at like 10 in the morning. Um, uh, right when we could get to the venue just to like, let's have a contingency plan cause it's raining. And so the area where we were going to have the ceremony would have looked great. Um, if it was like nice and sunny out and mm-hmm. it wasn't, you know, sticks and leaves all over the ground and everything. And so, um, that patio area where it had like all the string lights hung up above the seating and stuff. I think that really made for a good look. Um, like you said, especially with the overcast. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see some of the pictures, not mostly cause I like to look at myself. That's the part <laughs> I don't want to look at, but yeah, it's just to see how it all went. Yeah. It, it's so it's such a cool thing, like having having that stuff cemented, um, just just locking in, remembering who who was there, the vibes of what was there, the you know, uh, it's just I, I just find that it it just locks in everything positive. Honestly, my favorite picture from our wedding is a picture of my grandpa and my grandma who have now both passed away. But mm-hmm. at the time, my grandma was very deep deep dementia uh, or deep late stages dementia. 
Um, and we did a anniversary dance. So you guys may be aware, but basically start with every couple on the dance floor. And then it, the running joke is basically you say, if you, the DJ says, if you've been married less than one day, please leave the dance floor. So then obviously right. the married couple leaves first and then you work back from there and you find out who in the, who at the, uh, event is, has been married the longest. And so my grandparents won, it was, you know, 52, 53 years, something of that sort. And just seeing, um, our photographer grabbed a picture of my grandma and she just had like this, like her face was just glowing, you know, during, and so that was awesome. Like, you know, seeing a little bit of normalcy kind of poke through, if that makes sense. Um, whereas most of the time it was kind of just a watching babysitting type thing, not to, you know, be sour, no, yeah, sour yeah. or anything. That's just kind of where it was at the time. So I love looking at that picture because it's like, man, that was such like a, a true, genuine joy moment for that. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to see <clears throat> see the pictures. The venue was beautiful. Um, <laughs> waiting in line to get some food looking. Um, now, there was that big white house up on the hill. Was that mm-hmm. the Airbnb or was that? No, that's else? where that's where like the people who own and run the venue live. OK, that's like gotcha. their. Yeah. So when you, when you, I don't know if you saw that there are small signs on their driveway when you're pulling down the gravel road to the venue, it says like private drive, do not enter because that's mm. where they stay. Mm. Gotcha. Well, so it was logistically, a- it was great, but like, are you happy to be married? <laughs> yeah. So that's a, I mean, we've talked about it a little bit previously, but that's like a common question. Everybody's like, how's it feel? I'm like, dude, it doesn't feel any different. We've been together for so long and, done all of the other milestone things right so like talk to me at a uh, open enrollment when we're on the same huh. insurance yeah, okay. or whatever Very true. Uh, yeah i mean it i guess it does you know feel a little bit different but it doesn't really change anything between the two of us right so um Good. as it should be right, right yeah i think my biggest thing is that like wearing a ring is is annoying physically annoying (laughs) like it's just i'm not used to it yet it's uh i keep knocking it on stuff i'm worried it's gonna rub paint off my car handle door handle or whatever like you know it's it's a problem that i have to take it off if it's gonna ruin your car you should probably just take the (laughs) ring off honestly i'm sure chris will understand yeah she'll get it Um, but yeah no it's it's great i was joking with her we took uh yesterday and today off of work and uh, just, you know, we had to run to the courthouse, file the paperwork and all that stuff. And so last night we were going to bed and I was like, well, tomorrow's the last day of our honeymoon because, <laughs> you know, we haven't, we, we're not really planning on taking one anytime soon, at least with all, all the stuff going on with the kids. So um, she actually laughed at that one. There you go. <laughs> That's a rare win. <laughs> I, um, now I got to meet a lot of people that you had talked about and, uh, and everything. Yeah. So I got to meet I your dad. That was my. I think that was my favorite part of just like having everybody that I know get to meet each other. And actually I found out um, for as much as I talk to and hang out with and talk about James Evans, Kristen had never met him. Oh really? Yeah. Like he walked up and we were talking and and he was like, Hey, I'm James. I'm like, hold on. You guys have never met before. Like I talk to this dude. I talk about him all the time, you know, just we're texting about race cars or golf or whatever. Like, yeah, stuff like that. That was very fun. Yeah, that's, that's probably honestly for me next to, I mean, it goes hand in hand kind of in tandem with the pictures, but it's just like the having it sealed in and then just seeing pictures like, you know, you got something in the foreground and you just see like the, the oddest group of people in the background, you know, like it's right. like, man, it, it is kind of interesting. Now I knew you guys and I knew our, uh, you know, friends from Marion, but that's about it. So I got right. to, you know, meet different people and things of that sort. Uh, there were a lot of people really feeling themselves. They, uh, they got started <laughs> partying a little early and, uh, no, it was, it was a really good time. Good vibes. Some of those and, were my groomsmen. <laughs> yes. Yes, they were. <laughs> they were really, really happy to be there. And, and that's the thing I got too is like, you know, it just, it wasn't so big of a wedding that you're bumping into people like, Mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't room to move. Like it, there, there was, it it was easy to kind of navigate through and stuff. However, you could also get, there were enough people that you could get a vibe of like, 
man, everyone was genuinely happy to be here. Everyone is genuinely like, feels like they're engaged. Like it was not hard to get time with you and Kristen if we wanted to, which is awesome because I've been to some right. weddings and it's like, you can't, I don't know, come up and you like wave from across the room or something and kind of. Yeah. I felt like I got thing. to, you know, at least say, Hey, thanks for coming. Good to see you to everybody. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. Um, yeah, I think, you know, that's kind of my thing just talking, talking to everybody and hanging out. So I'm glad we got to do that. Also, yeah. uh, we would have had to pay a lot more money to invite more people than that. So it kind of worked out. <laughs> sure. I yeah. am experiencing that very profoundly right now. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, God, do I care about you? $250 worth or there, whatever. There comes a certain point when you start debating about family that yeah. you're going to invite or not invite. Um, oh, we're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would encourage you to um, set a boundary and then not cross that, you know, work that out with your fiance. But uh, once you start giving in to this and that, it doesn't stop. So then your cousin's brothers. Well, I guess that's also still your cousin. But uh, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> regardless, all those Joe Schmoes are getting invites and then you never know who's showing up. What is the Walker what, for you? What is the difference in uh, family sizes between you and Chloe? Dramatic. Yeah. Um, but I have way more friends, so it actually balances out. Um, okay. It's not a dig <laughs> at Chloe. She's just <laughs> way more, way more picky than I am, I should say. And so that means I'm a lucky one of the lucky chosen few. But I think I have somewhere on the order of fifteen family members. Okay. Um, including my nuclear family and then, um, you know, aunts, uncles, cousins, maybe like 18, maybe. And I think Chloe's got like 40 plus. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just a ton, a ton, a ton of people. All those Mormons, you know, <laughs> uh, but Hey, it's cheaper because like a third of the wedding is not drinking. <laughs> that is true. It's really, really saving on booze. Yeah. That was that was a concept that actually uh, kind of caused Heather some strife during dental school because a large part of her I, I I say a large part but I would say a um a not insignificant amount of her class were Mormons and they had a certain amount of money that each year they would pay in just everyone in the in or everyone in the class and it would be for these group events right. and they mm. always had they always threw issue at the fact that some of this money was going towards the alcohol for the event. And they wanted us to parse down like she, or she wanted Heather and and then the whole class to like parse down, like, okay, this is how much less you can pay and do that. And, and so, I mean, I know, I know money was tight. We were right there with them. We're in, (laughs) we're in the trenches with them, but it also uh, was just one of those things. It was kind of an interesting discussion. So, um, Yep. We're, we're in the middle of it, but I think we're going to be fine. Um, there you go. <laughs> about, about the booze thing. Cause I am not, not having a keg at my wedding. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's your wedding. There too. will be a keg. Yeah. Um, we had a, we also had to have the discussion about like what type of alcohol you're going to serve. Right. So we landed on beer and wine, I think specifically because there are a handful of people that I didn't feel like I could properly trust with an open bar. <laughs> ah, yep. <laughs> Classic. And, and, uh, and to be fair, even, you know, even if you have some friends that are going to get wasted or whatever, um, like I just affording the opportunity for somebody to accidentally have too much or whatever. I, yeah. I felt like you really run the risk of, of ruining the vibe by, yeah. you know, plus it costs more. So <laughs> it's, it, that shit is expensive. We're not doing an open bar either. We might, we might do like, a signature cocktail or whatever. You know? Right. Yeah. But still sort of a, 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 a beer equivalent alcohol serving. Yeah. Regardless. It worked out for us. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or you need any wedding supplies, such as tablecloths, <laughs> let me know. Oh God, you want to plan it for me? Because I'm the, I'm the one doing all the planning, which I Hard don't mind. Place. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I've told you, I worked as a caterer for years at a wedding huh. company. Actually, none of that. Um, that was like my first job when I started when I was like 14, maybe something like that. 
it was actually ridiculous that I was doing this job like freshman in high school. All my colleagues were ad full adults, um, mostly <laughs> like teachers uh, who were off for the summer. Um, so great job. Loved it to death. I have a lot of opinions about winning. Yeah, that's very interesting. I didn't know you did that, but yeah. I think that I also think it's interesting that you are planning the wedding uh, because I, I mean, I'm, I mean, Is Heather and I are both very top, type A. I don't know. I, I mean, the, the engineer. I don't know. Is, I mean, is planning Chloe's a med the student. Logistics. Yeah, I mean, it's not yeah, traditionally so. masculine either. But um, I have way more opinions than Chloe does. Um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of. It's kind I, of I think fun, that's honestly. where it comes down, right? Like as we're um, in a lot of ways moving away from gender norms and stuff like that. I honest to God, I think for Heather and I, what you just said is, pr is very, very um, uh, pertinent. It's like, who has the stronger opinions on this? Like if I don't care about something now, sometimes that in and of itself is frustrating. Um, case in point, <laughs> our trip we have coming up um, later in October, we're going Finally, Heather has been dying to go to Italy and, and mm -hmm, the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. It just, just wants to just go around. So we are finally doing it. But all these stops along the way, she's always just like, okay, we're going to talk about it on this date because we're going with her parents. So she's like setting up like Google meets with her parents and we're getting oh, on Lord. and we're pulling up the spreadsheet and we're doing all this stuff. And she tells me, she's like, we're doing this. If you, And I just straight up asked her, I'm like, well, how how does this meeting go well for you? Like, <laughs> cause I can okay, tell she's yeah. really worked up about it. I'm just asking right. her what, what is success for you in this meeting? She's like, I need you to have an opinion. I'm like, okay, I can do that. But I'm opinion. really glad you said that because I don't really have <laughs> that many opinions about it, but I will for you. Cause that's going to make you feel better. So like we're going to uh, Dubrovnik in Croatia and we're going to see a bunch of, um, a bunch of the sites where they shot game of Thrones. Um, oh, cool! Yeah. Stuff for King's Landing, which is nice. super sick. I cannot yeah. wait. So, little things like that. Uh, I was like, okay, I know that I really, really want to see that. I will plant my flag in that. We are doing that 100. percent And like, that was a little brownie points. So easy. I think we had more arguments about me not having an an opinion than my opinion of <laughs> of the things. She's like, all right, what do you think about these colors? I'm like, I don't, I don't think about these colors. <laughs> Um, Those are colors. Yeah, so, like I didn't know mulberry was a color until figured out can, that's what color tie I was going to be wearing. So anything's a fucking color. It can all be colors. You just slap yeah. whatever bullshit name you want on a color. Well, like it gets to we got to a certain point with some decisions where it's like, well, what are the guests going to think? And I go, I don't care what they're going to think. We're paying for them to eat and drink <laughs> and come hang out with us. Like if they want to think something bad, then they can do it when they get home. Yeah. Or else. That's very true. So, well, good, good stuff, man. I, I, we had a really good time. Was very happy that you guys invited us because it was a small gig. So, appreciate that. Um, and yeah. So, however, something cool that happened. I told you a little bit when, yeah, we, yeah. when we were at the wedding, but something to circle back to. So, uh, so obviously we had the ceremony outside come inside you had already kind of prepped me said hey downstairs are reserved seats family stuff of that sort you know like yep. reserved and then there was a upper balcony that looked down over the the dance floor which was super cool because we were able to kind of look down see all the dances but we didn't have to get in the way things of that sort so we come upstairs and i'm looking around and there's a lot of people who had claimed their tables already and i just see a couple and they're sitting at one of the tables it's a, a good looking guy and in, in a his, I'm assuming his wife. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't sure if they were married together, what it was, but, uh, oh no, no, no. He, he did tell me not, not wife. They keep kicking around, uh, whether yeah. they're going to get married. He's in, he's in a very similar situation that Kristen and I were in. That, yeah. That's right. I, I remember that now he, he did, he did mention that. So I go up to him. I say, Hey, can, can we sit here? Um, you know, and I introduce my, I introduce Heather first and then I say, and I'm Saxon and I sit down. And the way he shoots up <laughs> in his seat and he says, are you sex from the podcast? You should, boys, you should have seen Heather's face. It was like she saw a freaking ghost. She, she looked at me and literally, I'm not even kidding. The first thing, like when she, when she spoke next, the first thing that came out of her lips is, I guess I got to listen to the podcast now. <laughs> 
<laughs> so <laughs> you had already told me that you had told a friend, but I didn't. I had no context. That's I didn't hilarious. know who this was. So it was the perfect storm That's of great. like of how that was. So. I'm glad that worked out like that. Yeah, yeah, because I had you know I had been. Um, it's my buddy Zach who I mentioned earlier. Um, I had you know I text him all the time and I, I sent him our last episode because we had our conversation about philosophy of, of getting married and all that stuff. And I knew he's in a, in a similar situation and they've been together for a long time. They got engaged, but you know, they got a lot of other life stuff going on. Um, and so he's, he listened and, you know, he immediately hit me back. was like, I, you guys are my people. Like, you know, I could talk <laughs> with you guys for forever. And so I was like, well, you'll get to meet Sax. You know, he'll be at the wedding. I'm like, it's hard to miss. He's, uh, big boy, six, four or whatever. Old dude. And, then, and then, yeah, I'm glad that it worked out like that. Oh, it was perfect. It it literally could not have been more perfect. And Heather, yeah. <laughs> Heather, even when we got in the car, she said that still was like the wildest thing. She was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, well, I'm a big deal. I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> no, it, was, it was cool. Uh, shout out to Zach. He's, he's awesome. Uh, hoping he listens, but he was very eager. It was so. It was very funny, and this is a segue to your topic, Nick, because we were sitting there, and uh, James Evans and uh, Dave and and his wife yep. John, they sat with us as well, and so we were. He he kept bringing up the podcast. It was funny. He just kept he he was pitching himself basically. He's yeah. like, I got to oh, yeah. get on this thing, and um, it was Corey and Sammy, correct? I'm getting yes. those names right. Okay, yep. so Sammy had come up. And sat down next to Zach and and he was he was frustrated that she gets to sit on the first floor. Not really, but he was joking that he was like, <laughs> Why do I got to sit on the top floor and you get to sit down there? And she's sitting hanging out and then he keeps saying about the podcast and she's like, What are you even gonna talk about anyway? She's like, What do you guys got to talk about? And the way he rattled off topics, I'm like, This dude is locked Listen in. Podcast, but he was so aggressive or I mean not aggressive, but he was so like yeah. He was so adamant. That's the word I'm looking for about. Uh, he's like, we can talk about conspiracy theories. He's like, we know <laughs> two years ago, they told us there are aliens everywhere and or there are aliens here. And then they just told us and that just went away. And I was cracking. I, mean, <laughs> I was rolling. However, I thought it was very funny that you brought up your topic tonight and you said that you would like to talk about some conspiracy theories. Um, yeah, and yeah. that's very broad, but it was it was kind of pertinent. So I love to hear what your opinions are on conspiracy theories and that's my attempt at a segue question sure well um to tie it in even better earlier this evening i had text zach and i'm like hey man i've been busy with the wedding um doing a bunch of stuff let me get some of your ideas on podcast topics and he sent me like a dissertation right and so i was reading through it um a lot of great ideas i don't think most of which we have time for tonight but um, and then I, I looked at Chris and I'm like, I like, do you have any ideas? And she goes, you could talk about conspiracy theories and then started rattling off some crazy ones. And I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea, but I'm not going to use the ones that you that you want. Um, <laughs> of course, the the one that I wanted to bring up, which is my own personal conspiracy theory, um, which, like I said, uh, ties into the weather on my wedding day, is that um, I live very near an airport. And it seems that. Well, you know, as a good Midwestern couple, Chris and I are, are, um, we like to, you know, watch storm fronts come in. You see severe weather as long as it's not messing up your stuff, right? So you go stand outside, watch the clouds come in, you get the thunderstorm and the hail and all that stuff. It doesn't happen a lot here. And my theory is that because we live so close to an airport, uh, and that somehow somebody, is making all of this weather go around us. We'll, we'll watch the radar and literally see um, like the green and, and yellow and red on the radar, just rotate and just, it, it'll split and go North of us and South of us and go right past the airport. And then we'll get nothing. Huh. And, and I even went as far as to mention it on a work call one time with one of my customers who is in a, a different uh, larger city. And I'm like, yeah, we never get, we never get the weather I'm right next to the airport. She goes, you know what? We don't ever really get crazy weather here. And I live about 10 minutes from the airport. And I'm like, Oh, that's it. Confirmed <laughs> conspiracy. I don't know. I don't know how it's happening, but it's one happening. additional person. Yes. That's all I needed. There you Confirmation go. bias. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Walker, you got uh, any thoughts on this? 
I was thinking about explanations for this, and <laughs> off the top of my head, I'm I'm wondering if so. Uh, concrete holds more thermal energy than dirt, right? To heat sure. up the heat up the concrete, I'm thinking if there's anything that could cause, I don't know, a large thermal mass to make the weather bend around. I have no good theories other than that. Yeah, I don't know. Except I wonder if they want to believe. Yeah. Or, or if maybe even just a, a large flat area, you know, it's like there's no large buildings yeah, or anything. That's the, Midwest. that's the whole Midwest. That's fair. Yeah, the oh, planes that get decimated by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it is kind of interesting. There's a thing in uh, NASCAR fandom where, like, they call it the vortex theory. So, like, they think uh, weather will skirt around racetracks because the cars are going <laughs> around in a circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how serious people are about that, but uh, kind I of mean, the same vibe. I've heard stupid stuff. Yeah. I, <laughs> right? I well, I bet there is some level of like vortice above the track, but I can't imagine it's that powerful. I I yeah, I doubt it. That wind has to dissipate pretty quickly once it hits the stance. Like if you're close to the track, you can feel it when the cars go by. You can definitely feel the air pressure that they're pushing. But yeah, I don't think it has that big of an effect. I don't know. I'm not trying to look too deeply into it. It's just one of those I like to hold on to the like, yeah, we don't get severe weather because we're close to an airport and it's oh, yeah. like the government is doing something. You just pull just pull that off at dinner, but don't like elaborate at yeah. all. It's like, well, yeah, we're yeah. Like we, we don't need uh we don't need uh, well, that's, that's, no insurance. We're near an airport. Right. That's that's <laughs> like I said um earlier uh in our our chat uh Birds aren't real is another fun conspiracy theory that you don't have to think too much about. You just have to, Mm -mm. birds aren't real. They're all government drones. What about the paradox that my flight always seems to get canceled due to bad weather? Well, yeah, but is the weather above the airport you're leaving or is it in between you and the other airport you're going to? Who's to say really? I don't pay that much attention. I think the National Weather Service, but yeah. uh, Yeah. Big airlines. Yeah. Right. They're trying, they're trying to yeah. hold us in the airport longer so we spend more money <laughs> in the terminal. On twelve dollar combos. Yeah. I it mean really they know I'm a cool. they know I'm a stop in that chilies. So I don't I mean I don't know. <laughs> they're just trying I to get me to circle. Last time I was in the airport, I literally went to Chili's for the first time in my <laughs> life. First time in your life. I've never been to a Chili's. It was it was I <laughs> uh, oh yeah. I mean that's Chili's. But it, it was Chili's. That triple dipper will hit something fierce so <laughs> yeah i um i don't know what it is i i just don't really have obviously we're we're keeping things light i, I don't really have a like a conspiracy theorist like bone in my body <clears throat> with everything i'm just kind of like the super analytical i'm like okay there's a reason for everything do whatever but it is fun to hear someone it is fun to hear a unique uh, conspiracy. Like I've never heard anything about weather around an airport. So I appreciate you, you dropping <laughs> that, you know, you, you look up things and start talking about the loon, the moon landing or, or, you know, things of that sort. And I'm like, okay, I've heard this a million times, do whatever. But, uh, it, it is, it is very interesting to hear a, uh, a unique homegrown, uh, conspiracy theory with your own, uh, confirmation bias found not going out and getting that for someone else. So I do appreciate that. Here's one for you. I bet you never heard. One of my very good friends from college. Uh, she she is from the south, and uh, she was <laughs> talking about bow fishing and how you have to aim low if you want to hit if you want to hit a fish, uh, and that's because the fish duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has well, to I mean, be because of refraction, but not really because the fish they duck. I don't know, man, because if you try and bow hunt deer, sometimes they duck under the arrow, so. You never know. Them fish are squirrely. We're fishy. Hard to say. <laughs> except except when they're in a good. barrel, because they can't see the arrow coming. Well, it's not an arrow, typically. It's a bullet, but. Mythbusters did a great episode on that. They did a lot of great episodes on a lot of great yeah, every, every one of their episodes is great. I don't know what I'm saying. They don't. I don't yeah. think they did a bad episode. You hold I me get a lot of uh, Adam Savage's, uh, just him, like one shot directly into the camera, just answering questions from his community. Um, 
oh, I can't remember what what the channel's called, but you know, it's what he's doing now, just spending time doing his Patreon and membership stuff like that. I love just listening to him think and talk and I don't know. I it basically it's it's an automatic watch every time. It just like comes up. It's like I know for the next 10 minutes I'm gonna be entertained, enlightened and informed on something new. So we we had talked about that uh before. It's like what what'd you learn this week? You know, things like that. It's like that's mm. honestly that's a great source. Um tested. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. If you see on, on YouTube ever come up. You know our devices are always listening, so they'll probably feed that to you now anyway. So Oh, they always do. <laughs> Any other uh conspiracy theories coming to mind for you boys? Anything anything you want to share? Anything like that? When, when we were talking about this, just the I get a lot of uh I get a lot of, I don't know, Schadenfreude watching the flat earthers prove themselves wrong again and again <laughs> and again and again. <laughs> just something so sweet about it. Ways. There's one guy who got this like tens of thousands of dollar gyroscope or something i'd have to i'd have to go look it up but just this incredibly expensive piece of equipment to prove himself wrong which uh yeah that tickles me every time yeah my uh my dad used to tell me if you're gonna if you're gonna act out do it at home like you're gonna act like a fool (laughs) do it at home if you're gonna be stupid do it cheaply like don't do, don't be expensive and stupid. Like don't or <laughs> and then film it. That's very <laughs> wise. And then show other people what you filmed. Let's like, see, you, that's incredible advice from your father. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I need to implement that in my. Well, he he gave me the first part. I just I just made up the second part. So we'll okay. we'll combine them even together. Still, and, even still. Yeah. I mean, right so, along the same lines of if you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. Mm-hmm. That's very true. It's but very only true. at home. i don't think i have any other uh light-hearted conspiracy theories i do like to talk about all of them um and Kristen does a really good job of she she gets them all on tiktok or whatever and i'll be i'll overhear a video i'll go that's ridiculous and she'll go i don't know and then she gets me riled (laughs) up she does it on purpose she's like no no, because of this i'm like and i know what she's doing and i can't help it i start (laughs) Like, stop. Oh God, that's awesome. I I love that so much. Like the just the the ability that our ladies have to just be able to be like, mm, you sure you like just push that button, man? Um, <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Stop it. Unsubscribe <laughs> to whatever channel that is. Yeah, yeah. Get get that off of there. But it only feeds the the algae more. Your algorithm mm-hmm. gets completely. Uh, borked over anytime you click or you linger on a video longer oh, yeah. than whatever yeah get distracted somebody's talking to me in a video place like three times and then yep and yeah like, and then well, all of a sudden you got a, you got astrology yeah. it's all astrology <laughs> and, and like crystals. he is obsessed with this shit like he <laughs> loves this so we gotta we gotta or inject you, more of this or you stick on one because you're can't help but watch the mm-hmm. abysmal content mm-hmm. and then you're stuck yep um my favorite thing is when i get a video of like someone singing a cover like a, a like a cover of a song but it's just a snippet and it's like man i really like that but i don't want to leave the app right now to go like because you know they probably got a youtube video of the full thing somewhere mm-hmm. i'm like i'm not putting that much effort in but i want to hear more of this so i'm just gonna play it on repeat and then they're just all over so i mean Sometimes it works. Sometimes it does. So, um, well, boys, let's move on to topic number two. This is a um, this starting to become a bit of a recurring segment, which is called Nature <laughs> Talk with the Mountain Man, um, where we are all informed and enlightened um, by Mr. Walker here on different nature subjects. So, uh, Walker, what you got for us? Oh, I can't help it. We're we're on a we're on an insects kick this week. Insects and and uh, reptiles. So I've been volunteering my time with this week. So very, very briefly, we're going to talk about strange bedfellows like uh, the three of us. But um, one of the most interesting and exciting things you can see under a rock in Texas is oftentimes um, a narrow mouthed toad. And these are very, very small little guys. And they 
they are not, yeah, they're not very big and they're not particularly aggressive, um, but they have developed a very strange friendship with um, a tarantula. And so the tarantula and the toad will live together under the same rock and the That's tarantula terrible. won't eat the toad. It'll protect the toad. And the toad will protect the tarantula's um, eggs, I believe, from ants and other small creepy crawlies. And they live in harmony <clears throat> under a rock in Texas, which is uh, the sort of thing we should all strive to be doing better with. Huh. Live with your tarantulas, as they say. Now, I have bad news for you, Walker. I killed a large wolf spider in the garage earlier with brake cleaner. <laughs> Killed it so dead. Why you gotta do me like well, that? here's the thing. I, I went to take the garbage <clears> out and it was on the wall. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to leave it here. And then I came back later and it was still there. And then that's when I drew the line. I gave him the opportunity to get away and it didn't seize the moment. So, stead. You make <laughs> me mad. This is going to be this is going to be a part of the reoccurring segment where you talk about how much you like insects and animals. And I tell you how many spiders I killed that week. <laughs> Like just a, just a friggin' just a journal entry. <clears throat> Nick's just got a small black book in his bedside table. He just marks just every <laughs> every insight. I did find a a very large orb weaver in the backyard that um is still alive. I have not taken any action against it because it is outside of my domicile. <clears throat> Good. You should leave those ones alone. They're particularly fascinating. They've got excellent, uh, excellent webs, very high tensile strength. Yeah, except for when you walk through them. Uh, I don't appreciate that, but. Look, they're trying Which... their best, you know, they're trying their best to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I don't be a like. hell of a way to die. <laughs> a non-venomous spider just gets you in a web. Yeah, like oh, they're they all didn't venomous. do anything okay. to yeah, you. Okay. You're just stuck I, in I know. Please. I was I was Please. gonna make the correction immediately. They're all venomous, but not all dangerous. I'm Is actually it true that sure. they just they don't have the teeth to get through. Those daddy long legs. No, that's that's a that's an old wives' tale. <laughs> the opilions are not opilions are not uh, not venomous. It's not even a um, arachnid. Technically, not even spiders. It? Yeah, interesting. Oh. They're um, they're uh, arthropods, but they're not spiders. So back to the toad and the tarantula. Are they direct, like threats to each other? No, they have a fully commensal relationship. They just. I, I, hang guess, out I guess my question spiders. is like, could they pose a threat to each other? Do, do you think or I, like oh, the tarantula could kill the ever loving shit out of the toad immediately? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't but sure what what we're talking size the toad difference. Toad things like that. Could eat the eggs and or baby tarantulas if it wanted to. Yeah, yeah, no, like the the tarantulas are substantially bigger than the toads. Okay, um, usually you'll find the toad like tucked up underneath the tarantula, like fully, Interesting. like they are they are fully aware of each other. It's not just like hanging out on this. They are they are totally. Um, Totally. Just little buds. Which <laughs> they are totally, totally you know, <laughs> you know confuses and delights me both huh. at the same time. That is interesting. Yeah, that I guess that was my thing. I was like, all right, are we talking about two even parties? And they're just like, <clears throat> hey, no. Like you be there, you be there. Okay. That that helps me get a little bit of a, a better picture on what we what we got going on. So you can you can no, Google there, it, it, but, it is um, it is one of the one of the few relationships in nature that i'm aware of that is that is it is at least to some extent um i don't know altruistic is not the right word but um yeah they could totally choose to not do what they're doing basically i wonder if there's i wonder if there's other benefits that we're just not aware of seeing you know or things that's just inherent to them you know like like you were saying it's kind of like a i don't know they're just super chill with each other. They kind of protect and do the thing. And obviously it benefits them. It must because they wouldn't continue to do it. It wouldn't turn into a pattern. So it's kind of the nature of things. So I don't know enough, quite frankly, I, I know it happens. I've um, wit witnessed it secondhand. Um, and okay. I, I would be, <laughs> I would love to hear more information about it and um, get more, you know, scientific background from anybody who knows more. You just, uh, 
just getting out there in the woods, just flipping rocks over, just trying to oh, find. Oh, literally every time I go out, I'm turning rocks. You never know what good shit you're going to find under a rock in the woods. It's very true. That's my piece of advice for today. Don't you run a significant risk of uh, interactions with venomous snakes doing that in Texas? Um, yes. Okay. And? Oh, that's <laughs> just, your point. I mean, <laughs> snakes are cool, but like, I also don't want to be close to the business end of a rattlesnake. Oh, you won't die. I feel like the business end might be the rattle in that case, though. No, that's a no. That's the party end. It's a yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I was saying like that's why they're in business. That's why we know like that's what the, yeah. where they get their uh, right. their brand IP. We'll, we'll say yeah, yeah. No, they're, <laughs> from they're, the they're rattlesnake TM or whatever. Yeah, Ar- no. argument to be made on both to both sides that that might have two business ends. So <laughs> no, I wear gloves. You know, you wear gloves, and and the rattlesnakes. I'm not worried about the rattlesnakes. A coral snake, that would, a Texas coral snake, that scares me. Uh, the cotton mouse I don't love. Um, I don't know. I, there's a lot of them, but none of them are, as a full-grown adult man, none of them would probably kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, if you jumped out of your car going 30 miles an hour, it probably won't kill you, but it's going to suck. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, like for sure. <laughs> but that's a risk I'm willing to take to see a that's neat fair. snake. <laughs> that's you know what? I appreciate that. There you go. That's awesome. So there you go. Is that all, does that conclude the nature talk? Yeah, that's your season? nature for the week. Awesome. We appreciate it as always. So well boys, uh to wrap things up tonight, I got topic number three. <clears throat> I shared the article with you and I'm I'm gonna read at least a portion of it tonight uh for our audio listeners. Uh, I guess for video listeners too, but you're just going to watch me reading off my screen um, if you do that. So um, there was a bit of legislation that came out of California this week, and it directly relates to digital storefronts um, and them providing the the proper um, warnings or flags or, or however you want to say Um, on their websites or on their storefronts, letting you know that you're not actually buying a thing when you buy something in a a digital fashion. You are licensing content from that store. So this is information or um, this is something that, honestly, as as video games, as a lot of um, media consumption across the board. So obviously uh, we come from a gaming background, gaming, you know, uh, community, is where this, you know, this podcast is coming from, things of that sort. However, consumers of all media, um, you're probably listening. If you're listening to this podcast, you're doing it in some sort of digital fashion because we don't have any kind of physical media. So um, I'm recording these on eight tracks <clears throat> in my basement. Oh, that is sick. That would be We're a first vinyl win. Exactly. Yeah. I'd specifically on the, on the so shop. if I ever restore an old like. 70s nova with a track player in it and i can listen to us while i'm driving around there you go on the uh yeah we'll we'll sell them someday on the shop bit.ly forward slash ftw merch um, so anyways uh this is an article uh pulled from the verge.com california's new law uh forces digital stores to admit you're just licensing content not buying it uh it says california governor gavin newsom has signed a law ab2426 uh to combat to combat disappearing purchases of digital games, movies, and music, music and ebooks. Legislation will force digital storefronts to tell customers they're getting just a license uh, to use the digital media rather than suggesting they actually own it. So I find that, <clears throat> obviously, it's just the opening paragraph there. It gets into further detail. However, extrapolating that idea, um, I, I have sitting next to me, Obviously, I have my PC, play games. I have a Steam library, Epic Game Store library, all these different storefronts. Um, I have a PlayStation 5 sitting right next to me. Has a disk drive. I have never once put a disk into it. It was the only one I could get at the time <laughs> in 2020. It's the only thing I could get. Um, I've never put that in. I've never really cared. Never really thought about it. However, a um, couple paragraphs down, it says new law won't apply to stores that offer permanent offline downloads. 
and come as a direct res- but this comes as a direct response to companies like PlayStation and Ubisoft who in April Ubisoft they started d- deleting the crew from players accounts after shutting down the servers for the online only game. Um I think that's pretty wild. The fact that you can buy something and it can just disappear into the ether. And one last thing I'll say about this that is applicable to a lot of people who probably listen to the podcast, and I know for sure myself and Walker, uh, we are avid players of Destiny 2. And this is a this is a big concern uh, for that video game because you could have the physical copy of Destiny 2 vanilla, the, the base game. Mm-hmm. Put it into whatever system you want to put it on, and you cannot access the same gaming content that was on that disc or that, you know, presumably was on that disc um, when you purchased it. So I want to get your boys' thoughts on it. Walker, what do you what do you think about this? Well, this is something I think about a lot. I also have a disc PS5. Um, and I am I I try to buy my games physically, um, specifically because I don't want them to be taken away. But at the same time, Steam is incredibly convenient. And I have oh yeah over a hundred games. I don't even, I don't even know it. It's, it's bad. I am embarrassed about that, but I mean, tons and tons and tons of games only digital. And it's, it, you know, it's, uh, and like you said, for destiny, particularly destiny is the game I've sunk the most time into by a large, large margin. Um, and then that game changes. And I, I view it as a, you know, I, I, that one in particular, I'm okay with the way it is because it's and it, I really consider it more of a living thing. It's clearly an ecosystem. I mean, the devs are are up once a week talking about their changes and their path forward. It, it, it is it is not an untended garden. Um, and so I, I make the choice to continue, you know, buying my yearly access or whatever in that way. For for something like the crew or what other whatever other game that is online only, I think that's a bit different. Um, I couldn't articulate why, but Destiny has always felt a bit different to me. Perhaps just because I feel like I got my money's worth in spades already. Yeah, that's um, true. Versus, you know, yeah, I mean, like we, you know, I last count, I have. 5,000 some odd hours in destiny. I mean, I don't even just, I don't even know. Yeah, I'm not sure um, I can out myself for how many hours I have in destiny. <laughs> I just, yeah. just, yeah. I mean, yeah, just sitting on steam, 7,220 hours. And I played on Xbox before I got on steam. So yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm at, yeah. I'm at 7,096.9. It's crazy. Um, I mean, so I, I mean like, you know, I, you know, I paid a couple hundred bucks into it, but you know, your, your cost per hour is cheaper than almost anything you do. So I don't, I don't really feel bad about that money. And if destiny shut off tomorrow, I'd be really sad, but I would remember it very fondly and I wouldn't feel like I got, you know, robbed. Right. Sure. And I and don't so think, I, yeah, anyway, I, I guess, I guess my, my point is in, and maybe, maybe for the sake of tonight's conversation, the, the destiny thing, um, because it is something that's alive. And like you said, um, you know, it, it's something we've got all you and I personally, but a lot of people I know they, you know, the game's going on. I mean, it's, it's in its, it's past seven years now for destiny two, and we've passed the decade mark for destiny as an expand or as a, a, a whole, um, but moving beyond that. So let, let's, let's set destiny aside and say, if I'm looking here, and let's say, um, okay, so a game like, um, you know, Suicide Squad came out earlier this year, right? And I purchased it when it went on its first huge discount because I played a, in a closed beta. I actually played it and I actually enjoyed a lot of the movement tech in there. I enjoy, um, you know, I enjoy games from Rocksteady. I really, really like the, the, the Arkham trilogy. We talked about that yep. in our, our first yep. uh, episode. And it's one of those things where there's, I don't even think it's a sunk cost fallacy. It just is sunk cost. Like they put so much time and money into the, the suicide squad game. 
it had to come out right for for they had to get some sort of return on it. It had to go out at some point. I don't want to see Rocksteady go away, right? So I I purchased it. However, it did very poorly. Um, for if you, if you put it into comparison of past Rocksteady games. So expanding on that, if they just pulled that from my library, right? That is a live service game. That's something I have not put any time into the actual game. I've just put, I've put like an hour or two into the baby. That would feel terrible. Like the fact that I own that and their servers online. And, and so I don't know where I come down on that. Like Nick, what, what are your thoughts on physical media for, for your devices? Do you, do you buy anything physically nowadays or where where are you at? Yeah, I actually own very little physical media. Um, Like I bought, you know, an Xbox last year and I got the one that came with Diablo 4 and it didn't come with a disc. It came with a, (laughs) you know, a redemption code or whatever. Um, I have like, I think I have one physical disc for PS4 and that's Diablo 3. And I have one physical disc that works for Xbox and it might be 360, but I think Xbox One, and that's Project Cars 2. Um, I, but most of my physical media actually is for the Switch. Um, I have like five or six cartridges for the Switch, and then I've downloaded a couple of the games just onto the. Um, is onto that because you console. like the taste of them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, I, I actually, the Switch was kind of like the games that I have downloaded on the console are just a product of impulse. Um, I had a, I had a 256 gig micro SD card lying around. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll add some storage. I'm like, Oh, now I got the storage. Let me start downloading games. Um, (laughs) But I think, you know, I was thinking about it and I think for me, the nature of the games that I play um, most of like, I was scrolling through my steam library, right? Most of, the 109 games on my steam library are all like not online games. Um, there's a huge collection of the Lego games, uh, circuit superstars, which I'll never ever talk badly about. Although there is an online component, you can compete against other people, but, um, it has a career mode and, you know, you're just racing against AI or whatever. Uh, I play, you know, sim racing games like Assetto Corsa, uh, stuff like that. So I, I think I'm less inclined to have a really, I don't know, the same sort of perspective as you guys. Cause I looked at my destiny playtime as 5.7 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the most like perpetually online game I really play is Forza horizon five. And that even then has an entirely offline component where like you don't need to be connected. You do, if you want to get the latest updates, you know, car packs and, and all the points and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. This it is weird. I do appreciate, you know, as like uh, somebody who likes being pedantic, I do appreciate that a law like this would force people to say, Hey, you're not purchasing this game. You're, essentially leasing a license for this game. Um, but yeah, I don't think that would sway me in it in, in any fashion. I, of course, most of the games that I play now even are just because I have access to them on game pass. <laughs> mm. So um, yeah, that's it, there, there it's rare that like a game comes out that I'm like, I'm going to purchase that game. Um, if normally it's like, Oh, that game's available. It looks fun. Uh, if it's on Game Pass or I can get it, you know, EA Play or whatever, then I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. But yeah, I don't know. That's I'm trying to think. Well, I don't, I don't think my also we, we're at different spots in our lives as far as gaming. My life wouldn't be seriously affected if any one of these games that I actually do play disappeared. Uh, I'd be bummed out for a couple of days and then move on to something else. <laughs> yeah, no. So I, I mean, I guess on the, on, the game pass thing you're already that sort of sets the stage for a transient you know experience almost i guess yeah i'm just kind of leaning into that bad business practice (laughs) 
Yeah, no. I, everything <laughs> being subscriptions is the fucking worst, and I hate that this is where yeah. we're going. And I, I want to stop. But it's also um, convenient for a guy like me who's in and out of a campaign or or whatever. I'm I'm not spending. Uh, although at this point, I probably could have just purchased outright all of the games that I have played, but I'm not spending you know sixty bucks, seventy bucks for a game when I can just pay ten or fifteen a month and you know try justify. It's easier to justify that cost monthly when it's way lower, <laughs> and then not and think about it, add it up. At the there's end. the problem, <laughs> right? Exactly, and then fifteen, 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 but. I I think the I think the legislation's good. Um, I you know I don't think it'll change my behavior like you said, Nick. I hope that it would continue to I don't know provide some some force to to allow people to buy things more permanently. Just any any pushback against the system that's that's you know trying to sell subscriptions is good. <laughs> But yeah, I, so I, I believe that there can be like, you know, two, two correct sides to the coin, right? Like, so I, I do definitely feel uh, oftentimes that weight of subscriptions just like piling on and it's like, man, like you try to tell someone about, you know, like I found myself in the past, like wanting to tell someone about a, a show or something. And then like racking my brain, I'm like, okay, do I even have this conversation with them? Because like how apt or open to like, okay, so like I really, really like the second season of Halo, but how many people were actually going to get Paramount Plus to watch that? You know what I mean? And so like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't blame anyone for not wanting to do that, even though I like a lot of the offerings on Paramount Plus and Heather likes a lot of it too. So we kept it. Right. Like, so we got it for Halo and then, um, you know, and she just found some things she likes watching things of that sort. And, and it kind of just continues SpongeBob. there. SpongeBob. And I, I think she watches below deck, I think is on there. So that <laughs> oh, yeah. she loves that show. She, she eats that up, but, um, but yeah, like little things like that. But, but I often find that we're dipping in kind of like <clears throat> Nick, you were saying with the game pass model, like it, it has to do with like, I think we we may have said this in all three episodes now, but like know thyself. It's like, can you self-regulate and self-manage the like, hey, I am done with this experience. Cut it off. Like, I, I don't need this anymore. So I find myself doing that a lot with like Netflix, things of that sort. Honestly, yeah. there's nothing on Netflix for me. I, Those are, I will just. I think out. digital media not gaming media is easier for me to do that because um if one were so inclined they could find copies of that media to then store locally on their own network and watch at their leisure but um but Nick, it's a little more difficult i know it would definitely be illegal if well okay there are there's some nuance <laughs> to this whether or not it's illegal um i'm not going to get into it but uh, actually, I will. If you own a physical copy of a movie, you are allowed to have a digital copy of that movie. It's not illegal for you to torrent that. However, it is illegal for you to share that with other people. Um, just like when the NFL tells you you're not to recreate or rebroadcast any of their uh, football games. I digress. Um, it's, it's much more difficult to do that with games. Uh, nearly impossible, really. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Except that's for Nintendo, which that is allegedly. a whole other thing. Allegedly Nintendo games, <laughs> right? Or allegedly. games that came out a long time ago that are no longer offered. Um, yeah, on I, current versions of PC. But well, that that kind of gets down, gets back similar to what we're talking about, right? Like the thing, yeah, the fair. thing about like the you know. So let's say let's say for instance, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, what's the game that you really liked recently? Zelda like uh, has the cool. Oh, uh, Tunic. Yes, Tunic. Thanks. Um, let's say Tunic just goes, just gone. Just for some reason, the developer says whatever, like it, it's gone. That is a game that if someone had the know how and had the ability to, could potentially bring back, right? Like there's not mm -hmm. this forever online component to it. Right. However, I mean, if Destiny's gone, Destiny's gone. 
Like there are, <clears throat> there are raids. A lot of what I do in our server, our destiny server is taking people through this in game content. Right. And that's, that's kind of how we built our community up is by helping people through stuff that they can't do by themselves. You need at least six people to do it. And not everyone wants to, or has the ability to pull people together. And I'm bossy and stubborn enough to do that for them in, the, in a lot of cases. Right. However, with that, I do find oftentimes, I mean, at least once every other month, we, we just sit there and wax poetically about all the old raids and all the old content that's been taken out. Yeah. Of and it does feel bad. It feels bad that we can't ever go, bl- go back and play uh, crown of sorrow again or scourge of the past. And these raids that, yeah, I mean, we would probably just completely crap on it at this point, but it's, that's not the point, right? It's the teaching experience. It's the learning. It's the, okay, I know that if they go down this hallway, they're going to die, but I'm not going to tell them that because it's funny. The first, you know, like it, it, like let them experience this stuff, the joy of experiencing something that was so rich at the time that it came out. And so I, I do feel bad in, in those instances. I, I guess it's more of a conversation on like, <clears throat> you know, where, where we come down on it. Um, I do think this is a step in the right direction. Do I think this moves the needle, uh, in any meaningful way? Really not. I mean, it, all it is, is it's going to be a flag on there or if it's in the terms of service, I I don't know how, if they're going to make them put it on the thing, but if it's in the TOS, I mean, it doesn't matter basically. It it could already be in there. I don't think anyone would know. Isn't this, it's only a California law too, right? It is. Yeah. Um, which I guess, well, I didn't see in the article, but does it cover if, is it covering if things are published from a company in California or if they're being sold or licensed in California, right? So not sold, not sold. Right. That's why I said or licensed. Yeah. <laughs> um, because yeah, I know a, a lot of developers in Silicon Valley and stuff. So, yeah. but I think that would, it's, my estimation would be that it's only if you're in that state looking yeah. to get a hold of that content, then, you know. Yeah, I, w- I would assume you're probably right. I, I think it has more, it probably has more to do with the consumer side than the mm. seller side, right? Because we're talking about global companies, right? And they, they don't yeah. have to place this. However, depending on the implementation, it may just be easier to you know, implement it. If it's a terms of service thing, again, it's not going to move the needle at all. If it just has to be in their terms of service, if it has to be on the store page, I could see that in their way because they're, you know, they're trying to remove as much friction as possible. Now, the only thing I could see would be actually moving any kind of needle would be if there was some sort of additional click or confirmation or agreement that you would have to yeah. <clears throat> a checkbox or something of the sort. So, yeah. And then even then you could hire a pretty good marketing team or psychologist to figure out how to make that checkbox look in a certain fashion so that people don't mind clicking it. But sure. I think that could be a whole other discussion. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. And I mean, I, you know, when we come down to it, um, you know, I, I still love Heather and I still love going to the movies, but I mean, I'm not, I, I have these, like, sometimes I'll have dreams of like having a killer home theater with a, you know, the Dolby Atmo, whatever, all that stuff in house and doing the, you know, Blu-ray, you know, ultra HD, whatever, and, and doing all that. But at the same time, I'm just like, or I could just stream it and it's pretty damn good on an OLED, you know, throw that up there, whatever it's, am I really going to be able to tell the difference? I, probably not. And so it comes down where I'm like, I don't, I don't mind just letting it, you know, letting it sit in a digital library. Now, I don't know if they still, um, I'm, I'm looking up real quick. There is a, there is a app <clears throat> movies anywhere. Um, so I'm not sure if you, if you guys have seen or used that, however, it, it's basically like an aggregate app that let's say you buy something, they're having a, a deal and you can buy it through YouTube, 
you know, you can buy movies and stuff like full access to movies through, um, through YouTube, or you could do it through Amazon, things of this sort, these digital storefronts in this movies anywhere app, it will sync up all those different libraries and give you one storefront where you can see that because the worst thing, or maybe not the worst, but like one terrible thing that could come of this is like, what if you lose access to an account, you buy something on a joint account with a significant other or something like that. And you guys split up and you're losing access to this stuff. You can't do that. They're cracking down on password sharing. So if you have to lift, you know, all these companies, you have to live separate from someone for an extended period of time. It's things to think about, but using an app like this, that collects all your, it connects all your digital retailers and you have that in there. That can be nice. However, it can be a bit of a pain to set up the first time. You just got to get everything linked up and things of the sort. So not really sure we're going with that, but that's, that is something (laughs) that came to mind when, when I was thinking about, okay, what would it, what would it look like? You know, cause, cause I'm assuming the PS six comes out. I'm assuming there's no disc drive with it. You know what I mean? $500 upgrade. Yeah. I'm just like, I, with, with it, I mean, I don't know if you guys saw the, um, you know, so they've they've released the PlayStation 5 Slim now, and then they're doing the PlayStation 5 Pro as well, um, <laughs> coming with the, the Pro. So the Pro is $699, um, no disk drive. However, it has an expansion bay on it that you can do that. And then <laughs> they found it cheaper to just include in the box the the cover for it. So this was specifically on the classic edition, the 30th anniversary edition that came out, which was very hot, but um, (laughs) nearly impossible to get the the PS5 Pro in that that colorway. Um, They they said, okay, instead of us putting the disk drives in there, they have the data, right? Like they know how many people are actually doing it. They know what this is looking like. They said it is cheaper for us to buy the, the plastic shell create it in the colorway. And then if you happen to want to, for some reason, plug in a disc drive to it, you can swap it out. <laughs> it, it's just kind of crazy to me that they, that that's the route they took, but they did. And I, I don't think it bodes well for, but maybe this will, uh, you know, maybe this legislation will start something up there. I, I don't, I don't really foresee. I, I feel like bigger battles are going to have to be fought uh, in regard to, you know, keeping these games online or, or I, I've heard anecdotal evidence or uh, anecdotes about, um, games that have online servers and then the devs hand it off to the community and let them run it. Um, nothing I play could really do that, but you know, it's something. Yeah, that's fair. <clears throat> I wonder if there's um, any any uh, actual environmental impact to moving from you know producing less stuff to get filled in there. Just a, <laughs> just just thought. I mean, less plastic in game cases, less you know. May, well, okay, yes. But if you want to go down that road, um, you're closing down whatever plants are getting rid of whatever jobs are being used, which are probably being automated anyway, but then you still need people to fix the automation um, to create the media, the physical media and printing press or whatever to put the inserts in your games and quality control people to make sure that the plastic cases aren't broken or the discs (laughs) aren't scratched or whatever. So, I mean, yes, you probably are saving the environment, so to speak at a certain level, but then again, there were people that were doing those jobs and now what are those people doing? Nothing. And then the people who 
we're making money either way or just making a little bit more money <laughs> yeah. and not giving it to those people who don't have jobs. <laughs> okay. We'll circle we'll back to our that. Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There you go. Well, that's that's usually how I live my life. I'm right and I'm wrong, and somebody's going to tell me about it. <laughs> well, now the rest of your life, you're locked in. Chris is going to be telling you about it. So it's yeah. Well, that's status quo. Well, boys, I uh, I appreciate your time tonight. Um, some good conversations there. Uh, some things, Nick. Once again, congratulations, man. I know you said nothing. Thank uh, you. Nothing too too much has changed on the day to day. However. I think that's just a sign of that you guys were already on the right track and, uh, you know, go get that tax, go get that tax benefit. I have realized the biggest change is now that I get to say it, my wife. That is the first time I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring it up, but that's the first time I heard you. I'm so excited. Cause I mean, that's not the first time I've heard you say that you said that about right, a million right, right. times. However, uh, I still do. Anytime somebody, anytime somebody says the phrase, my wife near me, <laughs> at least inside my head, I, my wife, there you go. So happy for the uh, Walker. We'll get, we'll get you there. We're going to get you there. You are moving that direction. So boys, I appreciate it. Uh, for anyone listening, appreciate you guys. Um, let us know, let us know what you're thinking. Uh, leave your comments, follow anything of that sort. Um, check out the merch store, whatever. Keep your what eye out. That? What's that URL again? Bit.ly forward slash FTW merch. Uh, Bit.ly forward slash FTW M E R C H. Y'all have a good time.